Good morning, I'm Peter Sharoshi, and this is Drug Reporter Stories from the Frontlines, live video series on harm reduction during the COVID era. Uh, today, we are discussing the situation in, in Greece. As usual, I have two uh, guests with me, uh, two professionals from two uh, leading harm reduction organizations uh, based in Athens, capital of Greece. Uh, I have Niki Voduri from Praxis and uh, Tassos uh, Smetopoulos from STEPS. Uh, good morning, guys. How are you? Good morning. Hello. We are fine. You? Thanks. Good morning. So today is a, is a special day, June 26. Um, the UN calls this day an international day against drug abuse and illicit trafficking, but um, the, the, the harm reduction community told that we, we need to reframe this day and um, uh, activists transformed this day a few years ago into the support don't punish global day of action. As I see Tassos, you have a t-shirt with the sign you can show. <laughs> so yeah, this is the sign. And um, uh, in this, on this day, everywhere in the world, uh, NGOs and activists and professionals are doing some activities to raise awareness on the need to change drug policies and uh, make them uh, more supportive rather than based on punishment. Uh, so before we start to uh, discuss uh, general situation in Greece, can you tell me if there are any activities or programs uh, in Athens uh, regarding uh, support on punish action day? Today, you mean, for this day? Yeah, yeah, today, yeah, on the support. Yes, on there is, there is um, an activity in Kipseli, in the main market of Kipseli. There is the platform of NGOs. There is a coalition of NGOs. Praxis and uh, Steps are members of it. And um, there's going to be discussion uh, on, uh, the th on the rights of uh, drug users, what should be done. Uh, there will be representatives from the state. Uh, from other NGOs, from uh, addictions, uh, addiction therapy bodies. Uh, Tassos, am I forgetting something? It's uh, today, six o'clock. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Greek yeah. time. Yes. Okay. Oh, that sounds good. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, let's let's start uh, speak speak. Let's let's start to speak about uh, how this. COVID crisis affected uh, people who use drugs um, in, in your city. Um, so, so can you can you tell me like how, how the crisis changed uh, the lives of drug users? Now it's, I, I suppose um, the lockdown is more or less over uh, in most cities, but let's go back to when, when this crisis started and let's uh, please tell me how, how it affected uh, your clients and, uh, and uh, your work. Maybe you can start Nikki and then Tassos. Okay, um, what you must understand is that the main problem during COVID was uh, concerning the drug users that were in the streets, homeless drug users. In Athens, uh, there are quite a few people that don't have a place to stay. So um, as soon as the lockdown uh, was implemented in Greece, every, everything uh, was shut down. And there were cafeterias shut down, restaurants shut down. This was uh, in direct correlation with the drug users because suddenly they didn't have access, not even to bed and the whole house like before, but they didn't even have access to water, to a toilet, to food. So it was suddenly they were with nothing. Uh, in Athens, there are no, it's rare to have communal uh, com toilets, uh, public toilets and uh, water. So it's really difficult to have access to, the, to these things. And uh, it was quite challenging for us because we had to, to find ways to provide even more basic things that we had to do before. So it was a really big, uh, big problem and a big challenge. Tassos, do you have anything to add? Um, more or less, uh, Nikki described the the situation uh, plus the that the police was uh, pushing yeah. people from uh, corner to corner uh, 
uh, not allow them to find peace in, mm. in sports. Actually, I, I remember when I when we were with my colleague Ishtan, we went to Athens uh, to film about harm reduction. I remember that uh, it's very visible on the streets of Athens that there is a strong police presence and. Uh, and like I, I've heard a lot of stories about police aggression against uh, people who use drugs. So can you explain me or those people who, who, who don't know the situation in Greece, why is it, why is this so, uh, so much, uh, you know, so why, why the police is so aggressive in, in Greece and why there are so much emphasis on, on, on this kind of repressive law enforcement on the streets. So how, how did you get there in this, this state? In my opinion, it's a lack of education. Uh, the, um, the philosophy of uh, punishment in Greece is, uh, for, for the drug users, I mean, it's the, the prevailing uh, philosophy. Okay, not only for the police, but um, quite often, and Tassos correct me if I'm wrong, in the general public. Mm? So, uh, because there, there, there is very scarce education concerning drug matters, and also the police, the punishment is what is uh, mostly the um, what we deal with. Uh, there have been laws the the last few years that seem to be shifting a little bit the um, the things from uh, you know from punishment to rehabilitation and support and stuff. It's, it's not enough in my opinion yet. And also from the, from the founding of a law to the implementation of the law and to the, uh, what uh, the police and people understand about this law, it's a long way. Mm -hmm. uh, Tassos? Yeah, um, awesome. You know, in, uh, let, let's say at 60s, in Greece, we, they used to say that uh, the teachers, uh, the priests, and uh, policemen are the real powers in Greece. Um, in this time, uh, we lost the teachers. So we, we stayed with the priests and the police. Mm -hmm. So this is how they have it in their minds, that they have a power and they have to exercise their power. And the easiest way to do this is to uh, the most vulnerable people. So uh, I think um, uh, when we talk about Greece, we can't say that before this COVID crisis, uh, it was everything normal because you already had a crisis, right? Since. Uh, 2008 or it maybe even before that, uh, that the Greece was a country which was very hardly hit by the, this financial crisis um, and uh, uh, the, the austerity policies, polit politics in, and uh, the budget cuts and uh, uh, lack of uh, access to social and health care. So uh, did, it, did it also make worse the police uh, violence? Like, uh, was it even uh, uh, bad before this crisis or, or is it connected or linked to this crisis that the police became so aggressive? Uh, in my opinion, um, I really don't know if the financial crisis had to do with the uh, police violence. In my opinion, the financial crisis in general, and I'm not speaking only about the police right now, was also um, an ethical crisis. Many things in the country were challenged, many ideas, many beliefs that we had up until now about uh, life in general and rights and uh, who is poor, who is, uh, who is the drug user. So um, the financial crisis was um, was a really significant time, uh, but we also have to add to this um, to this equation also other things that happened in Greece during this time. For example, the um, HIV epidemic in Athens for in 2012 in drug users, injection drug users, and how they were uh, treated at that time. Uh, from the police and from the authorities. There were people that were 
arrested. They were accused of uh, prostitution women, uh, for to be particular. They were accused, they were prosecuted, that they were, um, how can I say, uh, intentionally harming uh, others. So we, I think that at this point we come through a, a series of uh, things happening in Greece during the financial crisis concerning the police and the drug use and uh, adding to this the, the cutbacks of um, uh, harm reduction kits from uh, public uh, organizations like Okana and others. So it's, it's a, a little bit complicated. Uh, you mentioned Okana, and uh, for those who don't know the system in Greece, so Okana is a, a state agency, as, as far as I understand, and it, it, mm -hmm. it uh, provides lots of services for, for people who use drugs in Greece, uh, and uh, it has a very central role in these systems. Uh, okay. so do you think it's a, it's a good system? Uh, Okana is the only state agency, the only agency, state or private, there is no private, that has the, the right and the ability to provide substitution. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, it's the only place where a drug user can uh, have methadone or buprenorphine or any kind of substitution. So in my opinion, in these terms, no. To have just one, no. <laughs> yeah. Tassos, do you agree? Uh, yes, I, I just want to add that um, as someone that uh, is coming from uh, the community, uh, because I used uh, to be a person with problematic uh, drug use for more or less 20 years. Um, I can say that not many things really changed since uh, 80s in Greece. And I'm talking for the daily life of the people that they are out there struggling to, to find their dose or struggling to have access to the, to the services. Uh, it's, uh, you know, it's having waiting lists. Uh, it's something that uh, says that something is, is wrong. Because uh, many times, if you if you lose the timing, I mean, let's say finding someone on the streets uh, in a street work shift that's saying that I'm tired, uh, I, I want something for my life now. So if you cannot uh, respond uh, to this. Uh, what he wants at the, at the moment, uh, you lost it. Yes. And you don't know if there is another time that you are going to have the chance uh, to serve the person or to support the person in order to find uh, another way. What do you think, what should be done to change the situation? What is needed? What kind of reform? Uh, first of all, to uh, decriminalize the, the law of the drug users. Uh, I mean, in, in one hand, uh, we provide uh, the kits for the safe use and in a gray zone. Um, and in the other hand, uh, the, the state and the law says that this uh, these people are criminals. So the thing is that uh, we, ha we have to change all the, how they see uh, all these people and, uh, and what they are dealing with. Do you see any openness from uh, the governments to, to change the, dr the drug laws in Greece? No. No, I mean, it's, uh, and there, there, there are the examples, let's say in, in, in Barcelona in the 90s or in Portugal in uh, more or less the same period. 
they realize that they have a problem. Uh, uh, they sit down, they collaborate in order to find solutions and to deal with it. Uh, in Greece, the, the last almost 40 years is just uh, putting uh, the problem under the carpet. Mm -hmm. So do you uh, feel, yeah? No, I'm, do you feel as as NGOs that you are your voice is not heard by by decision makers? There are no mechanisms to involve civil society. It's uh, some years now, and uh, Nikki, correct me if I'm wrong, that uh, the civil society and the organizations and NGOs are trying to asking strongly to be part of the. Uh, the policies and the and we have a strong denied from the state and also from the the ones that uh, they suppose to support uh, the these people uh, uh, such as Okana such as Kithea. We've been included in discussions in uh, work groups in. Uh, in many kinds of things where ideas are exchanged and, uh, you know, uh, strategies uh, are being discussed, but uh, in, the, in the basic policy making, it's not us that have any words. So, but we are there at any time, whenever the state has any difficulty, problem, uh, trouble implementing anything, the NGOs are the first to come and implement because it's it's easier for us to implement programs than than a, a, a state. So we are there at any time. I think that because we 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 have a knowledge from the street, we should be heard more, except from uh, academic and uh, you know. Uh, idea exchanging uh, things. So when, when you had this uh, COVID uh, epidemic uh, mm -hmm. in Greece and you had to respond quite rapidly to this uh, problem, so did you see that uh, maybe this could change uh, your relationship with uh, the decision makers, that they were like uh, dependent more on your uh, knowledge and expertise and uh, uh, doing some uh, new interventions on the streets, uh, things like that? One, one positive thing that happened through COVID, uh, during the lockdown of COVID was the implementation of two shelters for homeless people from the municipality of Athens as, a main, uh, as the key stakeholder. One was for the homeless people and the other was for homeless uh, drug users. So this, these kinds of shelters we have been asking and discussing for, I really don't know how many years that they should be there in Athens for people to have a, a bed, a warm meal, uh, access to toilet, to water. So in terms of, uh, of this, this was a, a positive step that happened. And if it was not for COVID and the lockdown and the fear of people gathering together, uh, I'm sure that would be, it would be a lot more difficult than it was now. So emergency circumstances were the, uh, the reason why this happened. It happened quite quickly for the Greek, um, you know, uh, <laughs> times. So it happened um, quite quickly during the lockdown. Um, we, we were, uh, we were, um, us in these um, um, projects uh, in a way for the homeless people uh, as praxis we are still implementing uh, there along with the municipality we have a social service and medical service there for the drug use uh, the drug user shelter uh, we have been having a lot of meetings and um, you know being asked about uh, our opinions and but in the end, it is implemented 
from the municipality, Okana and Kethea, another addictions uh, agency for anybody who doesn't know. Still, yeah. it's still more needed. Many more. As, I, as I saw in the pictures, it was even opened by the mayor of Athens, right? And so is, is, is he quite uh, supportive to this? Um, Yes, he was. He was supportive. He was supportive of this um, of these projects, and they were much needed in the, in the city of Athens. And there are more needed because they are, you know, they are spaces that have um, a, a, a number of uh, places, and um, I think it's not enough, in my opinion. Many other places spaces should be opened and also what is what should be done what we're saying years now that it should be done there has to be also a place for the drug users to use <laughs> drugs you know a, yeah. a drug consumption room now we have a place that some of the people can stay not everybody but we still have people having to use in the streets so is is the you had a drug consumption room right uh, operated by Okana? So is it still open? No, 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 no. 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 It's not yeah. open. It was a pilot program. It was shut out, shut down due to law things and complications and stuff. And um, people working in the drug drug consumption room were nearly prosecuted because of the gaps of the law you know uh employees i mean <laughs> and now so, we have the, the law and we don't have the uh, drug reception yes. rooms yes so, uh, if if i can add something more because there is uh, a little story behind the shelters um the fact the the lockdown in greece was like 46 days more or less the and uh, at a point there was the discussion that there is people left outside uh, by themselves um and the the government said that oh this is not our business this is the municipality's business so the the reality was that the 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 central government said that, oh no, you guys, you have to deal with this. It's not us. So the municipality of Athens, it wasn't like that, ah, oh, we want to do that. They had to do that because uh, the, the central government said that this is not, it's out of our business. So the, um, before the lockdown was finished, it was like more 10 or 12 days that uh, uh, they opened the, the shelter for the people that uh, had problematic uh, drug use. Uh, this is, this is uh, in my opinion and our opinion, this is points how they are, how interested or how they care about uh, uh, this population. Uh, Tassos, you mentioned uh, before that there are long waiting lists for opiate substitution program. Uh, did that uh, change now with, with this uh, uh, crisis that people can maybe uh, get uh, their methadone for a longer period, take home? How, how does it work now? Uh, uh, this is this was happening also before. I mean, taking uh, take home for a longer period. Uh, the waiting list from time to time is is changing, but the 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 main thing is that why why we have to have one specific uh, way uh, to to have access to a medicine because uh, methadone or Subotex or whatever, it's a tool. It's a tool and it's a medicine. And the right place uh, for a medicine is uh, the pharmacies. And then people ca can have easier access on what they need. 
so they can see. Yes, yes. So you suggest that uh, there shouldn't be any restrictions on accessing uh, opiate substitution medicines, just go to the pharmacy, buy it uh, for a prescription, right? Yeah. And do you um, have a discussion about this with the decision makers? What are the, what are the arguments against, against this? You know, there, there has to be uh, somebody overseeing the therapy of somebody because it is a medicine, in my opinion. You know, it's not like an aspirin that you can go to the pharmacy and take as much as you want or think you need or whatever. So there has to be medical supervision because it's a medicine. But what I think, in my opinion is, and I think that also we agree, is that it shouldn't be so restricted in only one place with all these bureaucratic procedures and waiting lists for these to for this to happen. For example, it could even be in, uh, you know, in um, family doctor, family GPs that, that could be able to prescribe or uh, municipal um, um, medical practices and or uh, wherever. I, I mean, not just go to the pharmacy and take as much as I want, but I, not in this kind of um, you know way because it 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 produces time time delays. No no wonder. Yeah, we had a similar video with uh, Norwegian uh, professionals last time, and they said that uh, now during this COVID crisis, they are now they were considering to introduce uh, stimulant uh, uh, substitution also for those people who are in shelters, homeless people. Mm -hmm. So uh, is, uh, now, and now we can speak a bit about the drug market in, uh, in, in, uh, in Athens. So what, what, what drugs are people, what, what drugs people use and inject in, uh, in Athens? How is the drug market now? Did it change uh, during the COVID uh, crisis? Maybe the prices went up. Are there any, any, any significant changes? Um. The, during the, the lockdown, uh, wasn't any access even to, to the drug market. Uh, because in an empty city full of police, you know, it's, <laughs> it's a bit... Uh, uh, people didn't uh, have access to, to buy any drugs. That means that the, the risk was uh, higher uh, to, 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 to buy... Uh, things that uh, was, wasn't drugs. Um, uh, synthetic uh, opioids, uh, it's uh, uh, one thing. Uh, synthetic uh, or a kind of cocaine, uh, also it's another thing. And uh, crystal uh, meth, it's, uh, I think, uh, plus the um, the pills, different kind of pills that uh, they use to to take. Uh, um, I think that uh, the the services that we have for harm reduction has to do only with the ones that they are uh, injecting or using opioids. Uh, we have this phenomenon for the CISA, which is crystal meth. Uh, over five years now, and there is nothing, nothing, nothing. It's a big zero about the harm reduction for these people. And uh, maybe I'm not wrong. It's uh, the population that uh, uses uh, crystal meth uh, at, this, uh, at this moment is even higher than the ones that uh, injecting uh, opioids. Mm -hmm. Nikki, anything to add from your uh, experience? No, I agree in general. In Greece, we have uh, um, our history of uh, drug use as a, a country is uh, uh, mostly many different kinds of drugs together. Okay, multi-drug use. Uh, usually people don't just take one drug. Of course, they have their 
a drug of preference, but due to, mostly due to economic reasons or other reasons, they they use many different categories of uh, drugs. So Tassos is right, either pills and the kind of cocaine or real cocaine and opioids and everything like that. And uh, I agree that uh, we don't have any, how can I say, plans about the, the shisha uh, users right now, except from uh, certain uh, NGOs that uh, distribute uh, these, uh, you know, pipettes uh, for safer drug use. At times, uh, there is nothing, uh, um, you know, stable in the... Even, even that, Nick, I think nobody nobody's doing this. Uh, maybe I'm wrong, but I, I think nobody's uh, uh, distributing pipes. Okay, I think we lost uh, Nikki, Nikki. A, bit, a bit, but I hope she will join us again. So, uh, Tassos, uh, do you do you also have um, uh, new synthetic uh, drugs, so new psychoactive uh, drugs uh, coming to Greece? Yes, and uh, I think the the multi use has to do also with the uh, with the bad uh, quality of the of the drug. Of course, the the street drugs. So it's are uh, very cheap and uh, in a very bad quality. And this is, I think it's one of the reasons that we have this multi use of different kind of drugs. Okay. Uh, and um, so what about uh, prison? What about the situation in the prisons? Uh, do you have any uh, services for people who use drugs inside of uh, prisons? There is, there is some, uh, there is, uh, but uh, still uh, not enough to, to, to cover the, the, the need. Let's say there isn't any distribution for safe, uh, safe use in prisons because, you know, goes like, if we do that, it's like uh, accepting that we have uh, a drug use in prisons. So the so prison- the, the system is- yeah. A kind of refusing the existence of uh, many things. So the, the, this goes like um, not allowed to them and that was I mentioned before that the first thing is that you have to to accept that you have a problem and then you have to sit down and talk and find uh, the ways that you deal with it. So the prison system is in a state of denial, right? Yes, and it's a very closed system and... Uh, but still there is, there is some, uh, some NGOs that they are working and trying to make a difference, but uh, it's... It's not enough. Uh, so, uh, what you mentioned that in the Greek society, uh, policemen and priests are very uh, important persons. So, what, what, how is the church? Uh, what is the role of the church in this, this discussion or in this discourse? Do they do they have any? Uh, yes, but you know, in this theory of uh, um, this church way. I mean, it has to do nothing. It's like uh, giving something to, to you poor people. Uh, has nothing to do with uh, the, the, the existence and uh, the soul of the persons. That uh, it's Persons like us. Welcome back, Nikki. Yeah, welcome back, Nikki. Do you hear us? Yeah, now I think she's connecting to the audio. So uh, we, uh, we we also in, in Athens, you also have um, uh, lots of uh, refugees and migrants. 
And what is the situation of, of drug use uh, among these people? Is there any uh, special problem or? Uh, there is no service for, I mean, there is just one service and uh, to advise from KTA uh, to advise uh, migrants and refugees. Uh, there is a lack of uh, translators. And uh, of course, uh, if they don't have the, the papers, they have access to nothing. And uh, I, I really want to say that last night, uh, uh, we we went to the to the shelter with uh, a guy that he's a migrant he has papers uh, with uh, his leg uh, is uh, I mean we 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 deal with him and went to the hospital and uh, take care of his leg. And the guy asked that now it's the time for me to, to go to the center because I have also to, to deal with, the, uh, with my leg and uh, staying outside, uh, it's, it's a risk. And the, the answer, ah, uh, we argue, with the, argue in a way with the security guards like, oh, no, is nobody here. Uh, after some time, was somebody there? And uh, the answer that we get was like, um, uh, we don't have space, but uh, uh, maybe we have space for emergencies, uh, but uh, you have to come back tomorrow morning because our supervisor for emergencies are coming tomorrow. We don't know exact time, but coming tomorrow. Okay, now I think uh, Nikki tries to rejoin with another computer. Uh, so, uh, what about uh, uh, what about this uh, drug consumption room story? Let's get back to that. Uh, do you have any chance that uh, uh, it will be reopened? Do you have any discussions with the ministries? Uh, how to because you said that now there is a law. Hi, Nikki, you hear us? Sorry, my internet completely collapsed suddenly. I'm sorry, I'm back. <laughs> no problem. Uh, we were just, I was just asking Tassos and also you that let's get back to this uh, story of the drug consumption room. So that you said that now there is a law, so the legal background is there. Uh, so what is the still, what, what, what is the barrier? Why, why they don't open it? Is it now lack of money or political will or why, why they don't open it? I don't know, <laughs> really. <laughs> I don't know, because in um, different kinds of discussions, uh, what we we hear is that there is a will, it is going to happen, but it doesn't. <laughs> so um, I don't know if like if it's lack of money, if it's uh, you know hesitation, uh, because the the public is also not educated in in. Uh, in the benefits of a drug consumption room. So many times there's the belief that um, uh, if we have a drug consumption room in Athens, in the center of Athens, because we cannot have it in the woods, we, can, we have to have it where people are. Uh, so there are um, people living in the area that think that it's, you know, we're going to have more drug users and more uh, crime and more, so, it, it need, they need to be educated. So I don't know if it's hesitation concerning this. Um, and, and actually just uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, this room was pretty small, right? So it's, it, it just allowed yeah. a few people. And I, when I also talked to some activists, they, they told me that the rules were quite uh, restrictive or they felt that the rules were quite uh, restrictive. So it was like kind of high threshold service. Um, so would it would it really 
help uh, the situation or if, if, if it would be open? It would help the situation, even with, uh, for, uh, let me say that this, uh, the, the previous drug consumption room, it was introduced as a pilot program. Okay, so it was working as a pilot program. Uh, in my opinion, we have the experience from the previous drug consumption room to do it right this time. But honestly, in any way that we can take people from the streets that are using with uh, all the dangers of using in the street and all the, the um, how can I say, the, the abundance of uh, their dignity and their, uh, and their rights and, you know, using in plain sight, any way that we can do it, it can, it will be a, a plus. Okay. Uh, so in, in Greece, you have some organizations for people who use drugs. Uh, can you also tell us a bit about those organizations and uh, what role they played now during this COVID uh, crisis? Did, did, was it important that uh, you, had, you had the voice of the users? You're talking about the, the state organizations or the, no, no, the, the of, of people that use drugs? Yeah, the people who use drugs, organizations of people who use drugs. Okay. So, did, so did uh, they, yeah. they, uh, we have organizations of people that use drugs. We have created a platform uh, with these people and with NGOs that are uh, in the field. And we, uh, all, all of us together, we try to implement to to suggest new implementations changes of strategy and all these kinds of things we as praxis we employ people that uh, are um, uh, injection drug users we have in our staff people that are working with us so uh, and in my opinion it's a very valuable you know experience to have and to work with these people in in this field so I, I think that more is needed, more, more um, you know, to, to involve them more because they're the ones that know, they're the ones that live it. Yeah. So, Tassos, do you have anything to add to that? Because you said you also have uh, lived experience. Yes. Uh... I think, um, you know, people that uh, has or had the experience, the, the, they have a knowledge. And uh, this knowledge is, uh, is, is something that uh, uh, the institutions or the, uh, the government or the NGOs need in order to, to, to understand more mm -hmm. uh, about uh, the, the drug use and the addiction. Um, still, there is, uh, you know, it's uh, still, there is uh, like praxis uh, has uh, some people, but still uh, we need more, uh, more, more chances and uh, for these people to, to, to use their knowledge because, you know, it's sometimes it's very hard to, to go back to the, uh, to go back and find a job from the beginning. But if you have an option to, to do something with your knowledge on the streets, it's a way out and it's useful for everybody. Mm -hmm. So I think that uh, there is there is more that uh, we can do uh, yeah. in this way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now that when when all the lockdown is uh, is eased and uh, uh, we have maybe we are still have having in front of us another wave of the epidemic we don't know, but right now it's a bit a calmer period. Do you think that those uh, 
achievements, what you had achieved in Athens, like this shelter for drug users, and can they be maintained uh, for the longer run? Uh, will this uh, shelter kept open uh, even after this uh, epidemic is over? We hope. It's a question. Yeah, it's a question. <laughs> we, we hope. We hope that it's going to continue. We feel that it's necessary. And as I told you in the beginning, uh, more need, more need to, to be implemented. For example, we have um, constant uh, telephone calls or emails in praxis for people that are homeless and use drugs from different municipalities in, uh, in Athens or in Greece. So I think that this was um, a good, uh, how can I say, uh, pilot for uh, more shelters to be implemented throughout, in the center of Athens, but throughout uh, Attica and Greece eventually. What are the other hotspots of, of, of injecting or uh, other problematic drug use in Greece outside of Athens? Uh, right outside of Athens, there's uh, there are two, how can, municipalities, uh, Tassos, Zephyr, Menivi. Okay, there are, you know, yeah. uh, Mostly, that, mm -hmm. yeah, mostly, mostly, yeah, the, mostly in that area. Yeah, the, it's uh, in uh, in the west of uh, Athens. It's a, a suburb, two suburbs of Athens, for, if I can say. And uh, mostly, this is where the dealing is being done. But also, there is drug use. Uh, you can see buses full of uh, people that use drugs coming and going to these uh, places. So the main, uh, except from the center of Athens, the main other place is there. In the, you know, outside Athens, I think that uh, places of uh, use and uh, dealing are more concealed in small uh, cities and towns. So it's not very obvious like in Athens. Mm -hmm. uh, a few years ago, you had an outbreak of HIV uh, among injecting drug users. What is the situation now with uh, HIV and hepatitis C? For injection drug users, you mean? Yes. Or, uh, yes. It was uh, it was clearly reduced. Okay, there were there were uh, actions uh, implemented. There was this was a time that, that there was a quite big cooperation of the state and the NGOs and the. Um, in addictions uh, agencies that everybody worked together and it was a good cooperation at that time in order to increase the, um, the testing, increase the, the kits and the, um, the um, needles and all the, the harm reduc reduction tools that we need and, uh, you know, refer the, um, the people who were testing positive as soon as possible to the to the infectious units and uh, stuff. So it was a good time. We we managed to have it almost to zero. But uh, at the last year or two, because of the cutbacks and the reduce of um, tools being distributed and many kinds of other reasons. Uh, empirically, empirically, I can tell you that uh, there are new diagnoses of HIV uh, in people that use drugs. And so there about, is a danger, always there is a danger. What about the hepatitis C situation? Now we know that we have a, uh, a cure for hep C, but do people access to this uh, treatment in, in, in Greece? Uh, I mean, right people now, in drugs. Right now, more people than at first have access, but the reality is that still people don't have access because there's the um, the, the AMCA, the social security number um, problem. If you don't have a social security number, it's very difficult to have access to um, testing, uh, you know, the, um, the viral, um, I'm stuck. Viral, <laughs> uh, yeah. The viral load, yes, and all these things, and it's really difficult for uh, for people to do. Also, we have to have services that support them, 
in order to to go and uh, and cooperate and be uh, every time that they are needed to go to go to the hospital and to the doctor so it's it's difficult it's better than before but it's quite difficult still and also the 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 biggest problem are the drug users that are asylum seekers uh, in Greece or don't have any legal documentation because they actually don't have access. We don't have only Greek drug users. Yeah, uh, yeah. and I think I have to add something that sometimes, and where we're talking about uh, people that uh, uh, are homeless or they are spending most of their time on the streets, uh, it's not their priority to, to, to have uh, the therapy. So uh, I think it is really needed that the therapy has to go on the streets and find the people. Uh, for example, what I can tell you that we have managed to do uh, from since, since 2012, uh, after you know agreements and discussions with infection infectious units in uh, hospitals of Athens, we have managed to have uh, the antiviral medication of um, quite a few homeless people that are drug users in the day center of the homeless that for the homeless that we have that Praxis has, and because people come there to have a bath, to wash their clothes, to drink coffee or have a snack. Uh, we also have a, um, a primary healthcare practice. So we give them their medication in the morning, in the evening. So it's easier for them to to take them because they will come either way. Asus is uh, very right when, you, when he says that when you don't have access to a house or a toilet, it's not a priority to to treat your HIV or even your addiction. It's not a priority because what, what's left if I don't have a house, if I don't have money, if I don't have access to toilet and water, what's the point in um, stop using drugs? What's, yeah. what, what, what's the point? So I think he's right. I agree, I totally agree. Uh, and and also, okay, if if we uh, start to speak about this, like systematic factors behind uh, drug problems, such as poverty and social exclusion and homelessness, in this regard, where where is the Greek uh, society now is heading to? I mean, um, is is there now a, a increasing problem like this homelessness, unemployment, uh, or? Or, or is the problem has been diminishing in, in the previous uh, uh, time? What, what do you, and what do you expect? Are you optimist or pessimist about the prospects? We, uh, I mean, uh, our point of view is that uh, we are expecting a financial uh, crisis uh, following the pandemic crisis. Um, for many, 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 many reasons. Uh, reasons. Uh, I think that uh, we are going to see the this coming in the next, uh, probably beginning of September. A crisis, a financial crisis. Yeah. Yes, yeah. you know because. It's it's um, it's expected, you know, it, especially in Greece, that it's mostly um, our financial uh, are mostly based in tourism and uh, all these kinds of things. Um, it's it's actually going to be a problem. We believe that it's going to be a problem, and it will increase. But we still don't know what is going to happen if there is another lockdown, if there is a second wave that it's as as uh, you know, large as the previous, even though Greece didn't have, or we don't know if we actually had so many cases of COVID, but you know, it seems that we deal with it like quite mildly, but we, we don't know actually. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, everywhere we have a lot of questions we can't uh, answer right now. And as we are approaching the end of our discussion, uh, so 
do you have any like uh, concluding remarks on on maybe some lessons learned from from this uh, COVID uh, crisis, uh, which you can use in the future to you know not to make the same mistakes what you made in the past. So are there any lessons learned you want to share with us? One lesson learned is that we knew it. It's not a new lesson. I hope others learned it. It's, it's really needed for people to have a place to stay. It's, it's protective not only for, uh, for these people, but also for the general public, for everyone. It's no use for people being homeless. Injecting drugs is not a reason for somebody not to have a house. It's not a punishment. Yeah. It's it's really harsh punishment for anybody to not to have access to so, so basic uh, goods and uh, rights, human rights, actually. So we hope it's what started in COVID is going to continue and be actually a strategy uh our I, I i don't know if it's a lesson but uh learned but uh i i have this this feeling that uh, the lockdown period um was uh i mean okay the, all these people left alone in the in the city center but uh, when the restrictions uh, stopped, now they are the, 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 they are the threat of the pandemic. I mean, the rest of the society that came out after 40, 50 days start pointing all these people that now these people that they left alone in the city center are a threat. Uh, we faced it uh, having uh, uh, also to, to, to our team uh, bullying us from uh, neighborhoods that, oh, why you are here? And uh, so I, I think uh, maybe the, that period of the lockdown was a, a small oasis, uh, if you know what I mean, because we wasn't, the society wasn't there uh, pointing these people. And when the lockdown was finished, uh, we came back again, pointing the enemy and the threat of the society. Well, it didn't teach us solidarity either way, the lockdown. Yeah. Definitely, we may need more uh, solidarity. And this is the message of today, the day action. Global Day of Action, support, don't punish. So Nikki and Tassos, thank you so much for being with us. Thank today. you. Thank you for uh, having us. And, and also thank you for those who were watching us online on Facebook. Uh, please uh, stay with us on, on Facebook and Twitter, follow us and you will find out uh, information about the next episode of uh, Stories from, from the Frontlines. Uh, stay informed and stay safe. Goodbye. Bye, thank you. Bye, thank you.